React Native by Facebook and Flutter by Google are two hot cross-platform app development technologies creating a buzz in today's technical industry. Today in this video, we will be comparing Flutter with React Native and I'll be helping you choose when you should choose one over the other. Okay, so let's get started. Now before I get started, let me just give you guys a brief overview of the topics that will be touched upon by me today. So first of all, I will be going through what is Flutter and then I will be giving a similar brief introduction to React Native 2 so that we have a general idea of what we are talking about. If you guys have no idea as to what Flutter and React Native is and would like to know more, you could go ahead and check out my Flutter tutorial, which you can easily find out on Eddie Rekha's channel. Okay, we don't have such tutorial for React Native at the moment, but we are working on that and that'll be out soon too. So for now, I'll be giving you guys a short introduction to both technologies and then moving on, we'll be comparing the two technologies on various parameters. Now these parameters include stuff like performance, speed, which already comes into performance, and the visualizations, the types of components that you get, the developer creativity that it might imbue, and a lot more. So there are 10 points that we will be comparing Flutter and React Native today, and in the real world scenario, you can find more than these 10 points. But in my opinion, these 10 points are the pillars when it comes to choosing a certain framework. So these include stuff like the quality of documentation. Now, if some framework is not properly documented, it becomes really hard to adapt to that framework. Okay, so let's move on and start off with the session today before I keep blabbering on and on. Okay, so our first topic of the day is what is Flutter? So Flutter is a cross-platform mobile application development framework that is provided to us by Google. So before we go ahead, let me just explain what that means. So due to the growing popularity of mobile applications, almost every company needs mobile apps or apps to remain competitive in the market. And what is more, companies are looking for an option to build mobile applications, especially for iOS and Android, with faster speed and less resources. Obviously, Apple and Google have provided native tools and technologies to build applications. iOS app developers can build apps using Xcode and Swift, while Android developers use Android Studio, Kotlin, Java, and more of such things. However, this requires engineers to learn two completely different sets of technologies. As a result, companies have started to adopt cross-platform solutions over the native solution to build apps for both iOS and Android which basically implements faster using a single language. So Flutter is a project started by Google and it was started in 2017. It is a programming framework built on the language of Dart and it allows you to make cross-platform apps that behave natively for a mobile application. If you want to know more about Flutter, please go check out my Flutter tutorial where you will also learn how to make your first app using Flutter itself. Moving on to React Native, well, React Native is something very similar to Flutter. It is a mobile application development framework that is developed by Facebook, the people who built React JS and Redux. So this is their mobile application front. So React Native is what Facebook uses for its Facebook applications, its messengers, and everything else. Now this works on both iOS and Android, and the main language that this whole framework is built around is JavaScript. Now, before we go ahead and start digging out each and every nitty gritty of these both frameworks, first of all, let's go ahead and compare them. So today we will be comparing on stuff like programming language, technical architecture, installation, setup and project configuration, UI components and development API, developer productivity, community support, testing support, build and release automation support, and the DevOps CI CD support. Hearing all this, you must have realized that this is a very developer specific video. This is a developer's perspective on both these frameworks, and this is not a layman's perspective where he tries to understand which installation is tougher or which framework is bigger like that. This is a completely developer's perspective as to what would help you if you are a developer, whether you're using Flutter or React Native. Now the first part that we are gonna be comparing is programming language. So the key benefit of using a cross-platform mobile application development technology is the ability to use a single programming language to develop apps for both iOS and Android. 
So Flutter uses the Dart programming language, which was introduced by Google in 2011 and is rarely used by developers. Dart syntax is easy to understand for JavaScript or Java developers as it supports most of the object oriented concepts. It's easy to get started with Dart as there is a great and easy to follow documentation available on the official Dart site. React Native, on the other hand, uses JavaScript to build cross platform applications. JavaScript is a very popular language in the web community at the moment. It is commonly used with React and other popular JavaScript frameworks. Thanks to React Native, web developers can build mobile applications with a little bit of training. With this in mind, companies adopted React Native as a no brainer. JavaScript is a dynamically typed language, and anything can be done with JavaScript, which is good and a bad thing at the same time. So, what do we analyze from this comparison? JavaScript is widely used by most web developers and hence it is easy to adopt the react native framework dart also has a great feature set but it's rarely used and less known in the developer community considering this it's clear that react native wins point in the programming language category our next point of comparison is installation so the installation method should be straightforward without having too many complicated steps so that it could be easily learned by developers that are just starting out with it Flutter can be installed by downloading the binary for a specific platform from the GitHub page, which is very easy in my opinion. Case of Mac OS, you can download the flutter.zip file that is also there in the GitHub page, and you also have to set up a separate path variable. Now you can do this easily by the command line instructions that you can find on the official documentation. So Flutter should improve the installation method by supporting package managers like Homebrew, Macports, Yum, Apt, etc., so that users won't need to perform these extra steps during installation. React Native framework can be installed using the Node Package Manager or NPM for short. For developers that have a JavaScript background, installation of React Native is easy, whereas other developers would need to learn the Node Package Manager. The Node Package Manager can install the packages locally or globally. The developer will need to understand where exactly the binary is located. Whilst installing React Native on Mac OS, you will need to have the Homebrew Package Manager as well. In short, you can do it from the command line. Okay, so what do we analyze from this comparison? Well, both Flutter and React Native lack one liner installation with native package managers for specific OS. But Flutter installation seems to require extra steps for adding the binary to the path and downloading it from the source code which might be useful for non JavaScript developers. React Native can be installed by just using package manager without hassle of downloading the binary from the source. So in my opinion, React Native wins out here again when compared to the installation part. Now the next parameter that we are going to be actually comparing React and Flutter on is documentation. So the process of setting up the developer machine to use the new framework takes time. It requires a lot of configuration of software installation and the technology should have proper documentation to get users up and running. Getting started guide for Flutter has detailed information on IDE setup and platform setup for both iOS and Android. You can read up all the required steps on the installation link. On top of this, Flutter also has a command line interface tool called Flutter Doctor, which can guide developers through the setup. It inspects which tools are installed on the local machine and which tools need to be configured. Once the Flutter Doctor command is happy, we can carry on with creating a new Flutter app. There is a separate page on how to configure the editor to get going with Flutter, and you can also find this in the documentation. Once all is set up and done, we can create and run a new Flutter app from the command line by just running a few simple instructions. On the other hand, the Getting Started Guide of React Native assumes that the developer already has all the required setup for developing for iOS and Android. There is little information on the Xcode command line tools, but it won't be enough to get going. The documentation directly jumps to the step of creating a new project. A new reactive project can also be created and run on an iOS simulator using some few simple commands. Now at the step, you must be thinking what might be the result. Well, from the comparison above, it's clear that Flutter offers a better documentation and command line support for setup and configuration. So Flutter takes the point out here. Now, the next point for configuration is architecture. Now, when choosing a cross-platform mobile app development framework, it's essential to consider its technical architecture. 
By knowing the internals of the framework, we can make an informed decision and choose the one that is better for our project. Flutter uses the Dart framework, which has most of the components inbuilt. So it's bigger in size and often does not require to bridge to communicate with the native modules. Dart has so many frameworks like Material Design and Cupertino packed inside, which provide all the required technologies needed to develop mobile applications. Dart framework uses Kia C++ engine, which has all the protocols, compositions, and channels. The architecture of Flutter engine is explained in detail on GitHub. In short, Flutter has everything needed for app development in the Flutter engine itself. On the other hand, React Native architecture heavily relies on the JavaScript runtime environment architecture, also known as the JavaScript badge. Now the JavaScript code is compiled into native code at runtime. React Native uses the Flux architecture from Facebook, and there is a detailed article on the core architecture of React Native here. Now in short, React Native uses JavaScript bridges to communicate with React Native modules. Well, the Flutter engine has the most of the native components in the framework itself, and it always doesn't need a bridge to communicate with the native components. React Native, however, uses the JavaScript bridge to communicate with native modules, which results in poorer performance. So from a developer's perspective, out here Flutter wins again. Our next point of comparison is features and API. So when developing cross-platform mobile application, support for the native component is key. Without the support of native components, our application won't feel like a native app, and it's very important that the framework has an API to access the native modules without any pain. So Flutter framework is bundled with UI rendering components, device API access, navigation, testing, stateful management, and loads of libraries. The rich set of components removes the need to use third-party libraries. If you get the Flutter framework, it means you will be having everything needed for developing a mobile application. Flutter also has widgets for material design and Cupertino that allows developers to easily render the UI on both iOS and Android platforms. On the other hand, the core React Native framework provides just the UI rendering and device access APIs. In order to access most of the native modules, React Native has to rely on third-party libraries. React Native is too much dependent on third-party libraries and the full list of development components and official APIs can be found on the documentation. So from the analysis, we reach to the conclusion that Flutter is rich in development APIs and UI components, while React Native is too much dependent on third-party libraries. So as a developer, I would give my point to Flutter again. Now the next point that we are going to be discussing is developer productivity. So developer productivity is key to building faster apps, and in this regard, it's very important to be able to focus on application development without any kind of weight or distraction. So on the side of Flutter, there is a hot reload feature and it's very easy to get started with the demo application. However, as the complexity of the application grows, developers would need to learn a lot and adopt the new Flutter concepts. In addition, Dart is not a common language and there is a lack of support for it in many IDEs and text editors. On the other hand, for React Native, if the developer is skilled at JavaScript, then it's fairly easy to use those skills for cross-platform application development. React Native has a hot reload feature, which saves a lot of developer time while testing the changes in the UI. In terms of IDE support, developers are free to use any text editor or IDE of their choice. From the comparison, we analyze and see that being a mature framework, React Native has a great developer support in terms of IDE and language features. Flutter is fairly new at this point, but will catch up very soon, and the community around Flutter is constantly growing. Now, talking about community, our next point of comparison is community support. So as soon as developers start to show interest in the technology and adopt it in their development process, they form a community to share knowledge. A strong community helps developers to learn from each other and solve the problems they are facing. So Flutter has been around for a while, but it gained a lot of attention when Google promoted it in Google I.O. conference in 2017. The Flutter community is growing rapidly these days, Meetups and conferences are taking place online, and the biggest event coming will be the Flutter Live in December. In short, the Flutter community is growing rapidly, and yet there are still not enough resources for developers to solve common issues. While on the React Native side, it was launched in 2015 and hence has gained a lot of popularity ever since. There is a community of React Native developers on GitHub, 
and it's a uh, lots of meetups and conferences around the world one of the most recent conferences on react native was react native eu held in poland but there are meetups taking place in almost every major city in the world so the react native community and the resources have grown in size since the framework was launched flutter is still fairly new all the community support is rapidly growing so my point again in this round goes to react native now our point of comparison is going to be something more technical and that is testing so writing tests is a great way to get quick feedback on the code that you have written there is always a testing framework associated with every mature technology to allow developers to create unit integration and ui tests for the applications flutter provides a rich set of testing features to test applications at unit widgets and integration levels flutter has great documentation on testing flutter apps and you can read about that in the official documentation also flutter has a cool widget testing feature where we can create widget tests to test the ui and run them at the speed of unit tests on the other hand react native is a javascript framework and there are a few unit level testing frameworks available in javascript the tools like jest can be used for snapshot testing however when it comes to integration or ui level testing there is no official support from react native there are third party tools like appium and detox that can be used for testing and you can learn about them in my appium tutorial video so from this we analyze that the react native community has no official support for integration and ui level testing while flutter has great documentation and a rich set of features for testing and other such applications so my point as a developer goes to flutter in this round now our second last point of comparison is automation support so releasing mobile applications to the app store or play store is a painful process it involves the complex task of code signing and all other application setup when it comes to cross platform mobile app development it gets even trickier so it's always nice to have some automation support there now let's talk about react first this time so the react native documentation doesn't have any automated steps to deploy ios apps to app store however it provides a manual process for deploying the application from xcode there is an article on how to deploy react and you can find that in the official documentation however you can do that using third party tools like fastlane to deploy ios and android applications written in react native the process of using fastlane to ship react native apps is kind of tricky but it is a thing that you can do for yourself this means that react native has to rely on third party libraries for build and release automation flutter on the other hand has a strong command line interface we can create a binary of the app by using the command line tools and following the instructions in the flutter documentation for building and releasing android apps and ios apps on top of this flutter has officially documented the deployment of process with fastlane in their official documentation too so let's analyze now flutter has a great build automation tooling and can be used to deploy apps from the command line react native apps lack support for command line interface tools that are officially supported for build automation so flutter has got five points at this moment which means that react native has to score the last point in order to tie the competition the last point of comparison is the ci cd support or as you might know it the continuous integration and continuous development support so devops has become quite the big thing today so continuous integration and continuous delivery practices are essential for any application in order to get continuous feedback and avoid releasing buggy code so react native doesn't have any official documentation on setting up ci cd however there are some articles which describe the ci cd for react native applications you can find such articles on the web pretty commonly on the other hand flutter has a section on continuous integration and testing which includes a link to external sources however flutter's rich command line interface allows us to set up ci cd very easily and you can read about them on blog posts found on the web so flutter apps are easy and painless to set up on continuous integration and continuous development services by using its strong cli tools react native doesn't provide any official instructions for ci cd practices so my point goes to flutter again in this part so flutter wins six points and react native has four points so in conclusion we can say react native and flutter both have their pros and cons but flutter came out as the winner in this match some of the industry experts have predicted that flutter is the future of the mobile application development considering the comparison we just did it's clear that flutter has entered the cross platform mobile development race in a very strong manner 
let's not predict the future but wait and watch i'll meet you guys in the next video until then goodbye